Alrighty, welcome back. We're back at it. My name's Bad Chad, and my Queen Jolene's on the camera, and we're on air. We've managed to get both sides fiberglass, like we started the other day. We we got them both done. Uh, what I'm going to do today, I'm just going to show you how I'm going to rip it off and make it look the way I want it to look. Uh, you would think that would be a lot of work with that like that. You would never want to hand bomb something like that. Um, I don't really want to take a grinder to it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 8-inch DA with a 40 grit on it, the coarsest grip. You can get a 36 maybe, I'm not sure, but I'm going to take the 40 grit on it. Uh, I might have to change it because it might be dull, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to show you how I'm going to rip it off and how quick I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm, going to, I'm going to stress on this project here, we are not going for 100% paint job on it. We want it sort of to match the race car. We want it to look, we want it to look the era. So we're not going to like make everything perfect on this. I'm not going to spend a bunch of money on, on priming it and sanding it and guide coating it. Not going to do that. Uh, we'll we'll take you along with the process, but we're going to make it look good uh, for what it's supposed to be for is for hauling Jolene's race car. We might be able to haul something else on it other than Jolene's race car, but uh, it basically would be a small car in my mind. Let's rip some of it off. I'll show you how fast I'm going to do it. And uh, I'm going to use an 8 inch orbital. And here we go. These things are nice for stripping paint, um, uh, blocking big areas. You got a nice flat area. All I'm doing is holding this on a on this on a certain angle where it hits the exhaust and it hits the the flat steel itself. That's all I'm doing. And and uh, basically what I'm going to try to do is keep uh, the this the same distance all the way along so it looks the same. I've got this the same distance. I'm trying to keep that just the same same width is all I'm trying to do to keep the fiberglass the same width all the way along so it'll look well. So you see the, the, the fiberglass on the edge of the exhaust. Take that right off. Yeah, looks good just keep going like that and hopefully it stays like that and if it does not um, we'll have to put a little we're going to put a little filler on it no doubt This, uh, this is a little bit, it's a little bit dull. We'll change it in a bit and I'll show you how I change it. Not a big secret. I could rip it off with a with the grinder. You see the grinder over there with the 24 grit. I could rip it off with that, but what happens with that? I would end up digging the metal up too much. Um, and this, this way here, I'm getting closer with doing it this way. If I start digging it up too much, then I have to do more body work.
just a little bit low there. We can put more in that. As I've done this and made this shape on the truck, I'm hoping in your brain that you can make the shape that you would want to make on the side of your truck. Uh, and you, you know how to get this shape, obviously. We do it with the exhaust and the flat metal, but this, this could have been done so many ways. We could have come flat up here and then rolled it down and then come down, went down a little bit and then rolled it down again. We could have done many different things, but I wanted to go this way and that's why I did it. And uh, if you don't know, um, what makes you happy is when you do things your way. <laughs> That's what makes you happy. So make sure that you do it your way whenever you get a big truck. But uh, basically, um, you can make many different shapes on the side of your truck uh, to make your tow truck or your whatever, your everyday truck or whatever. You can do it any way you want to to make yourself happy. But this is a really nice way to make different shapes come together easily, in my opinion. And that's my belly button. Jolene looks amazing this morning, and I made her coffee in bed this morning, boys. Yes, I did. And the reason why is because I want her to love me. I'm just holding it flat on an angle. That's all I'm doing. Just holding it flat on an angle. I'm going to grab a, a stool. It's nice here in Nova Scotia. It rained last night, but it's not raining right now. It was nice to be able to pull the truck out and get this done or go for it. And I can do a little bit of this today to have fun. I guess I can stand on this, I guess. Oh, we got one person signed up for the course already? Awesome. Can't wait to meet them. Uh, also, the people that sign up obviously are going to get a free tour. Well, I guess it won't be free, but <laughs> whatever. But you're not paying for the tour, obviously. Gee, tore me right over. <laughs> ah, well. I doubt I'll even prime this. This, uh, well, I probably will, will not prime this because we're going to leave the truck kind of half patina or it patina, but we are going to change some color on it. Joey's got an idea of what she wants to change the color on. We're probably going to use a direct to metal paint. We're not even going to, we're not going to prime this. It's just because it's material and it's money. And uh, if we primed it with our feather fill, we'd have to sand it. And we don't, I don't want to sand it. I just want, I want to rub over with the DA to get the, the direct to metal probably to fit or to adhere. But we're basically to probably just going to paint right over top of what we got going on and uh, try to get it to match the truck a little bit. It's like my face and my ass, like I always say, they don't look alike. It's that they both belong to me. That's why they're a match. <laughs>
Some would probably disagree, but... I'll let you know another little secret. I guess it's not a secret. We towed home a Winnebago here a while ago. I made a three uh, a tow bar for it, and it crumpled. It was funny. Uh, and then we then we strengthened it up. And we bring the the Winnebago home. I'm also going to make that into a hauler someday, and that's why I got it ripped apart because I uh, I think that would be a good hauler for any car. Um, that we're making this one for a specific car, but uh, the Winnebagos is that's what I'm thinking. I would make a car hauler out of that to haul other cars. Where it's not sanded means that it's, there's not enough. I'm going to change this pad because I think it's a little bit dull. Uh, I'm going to use a heat gun and I'm going to heat it up and then we'll rip it off. Watch out, sweetheart. The heat gun going. Uh, Jolene, if I, I haven't told anybody yet, but Jolene has taken me to uh, the race of gentlemen and uh, to for her to have a little bit of time uh, had her to have a little bit of time to herself because when we do these videos every day Jolene is busy every day because she makes for YouTube and she makes them for Facebook but so what's going to happen is we've been working on the Bugatti behind the scenes a little bit um, <clears throat> and uh, what's going to happen she may play some of them videos while we're at the race of gentlemen so she can have a little time to herself and uh, you'll get to see you'll get to see I'm not going to tell you that's what you're going to have to come and watch but there's a few things that have happened and a few things that look really nice and, and uh, she'll probably play that for you while we're there. Heat gun just softens the glue up on the, on the pad so when you rip them off, they don't stick on your DA.
basically. See how nice that ripped off? Um, if you see a DA that's got a bunch of sticky stuff on or paper on it, you know what they didn't do. They didn't heat it with a heat gun to take it off and it just keeps applying to the, to the DA and ruins the pad after a while. So I'm just going to get another stick gate. <clears throat> These sandpapers are very, exp well I find they're expensive for what they are. So you really have to use them. I like to use them up, so I always fold them over and use them as hand paper after. Those who didn't watch yesterday, there will be a course here on the 8th and 9th of October. We will be customizing a car. If you want a chance to be here out of 10 people, it's $200 and you'll be able to live, if people that can't make it that want to watch, it's $10 for live streaming it. Um, I think Jolie's going to come up with a couple different things. Um, <clears throat> hopefully we can get some of the participants um, filmed. <laughs> well, we're always going to film them all day long, but uh, dig into it a little bit more than just filming them work on the car. See what happens. Let's, let's grab this side. I'm still holding this thing f flat and what I mean by flat is I'm holding it like this I'm not digging it in like that to get it I'm holding it in one angle so I do find the spots that are low basically if I don't if I don't hold it flat or hold it on the same angle that I hold it all the time well then I'm, I'm lying to myself because I will not know what's high low what looks good and what doesn't I'm basically keeping this on the same angle at all time what that tells me there's it's low there obviously already I know I'm kind of fast, keep the camera moving.
bottom for now, go all the way around. The corners are not going to be fun and the corners never are because you're going to have I'm going to have to get in there and use something probably um, I'll actually I'll show you I, I think I know what I want to use and it's not my fingertips The nicer I put it on, the better it happens to work out. You can tell that. Jim has got a new car. We want to go see it and talk about it and look at it. I'm not sure you know, Jim's going to work on it or not. He just bought it probably because it uh, was at the right price. And I think him and his father had rebuilt one back in the day. And uh, he's he's very partial to Studebaker. And, but we want to go out and take a look. 1918 or something like that it is. 1917, whatever it is. But we want to go up to Jimbo's and probably take a look at his car. We'll, we'll no doubt take you with us. You'll be amazed what this looks like when it's painted. It'll look really, really nice. And did you have any doubt? Ah. But there's a bunch of work to get it to look right. You know, I have to sand it all off. All the stuff like that, I'll sand after my sandpaper gets dull because it's on the angle there. Also, the people that come to the course, I forgot to tell you, you're going to be able to get to meet Jimbo because we'll invite Jimbo over. He'll probably be the, um, what cuss that? The invitee, what? He'll be, the, Jimbo will be the guest of honor. Um, no doubt in my mind, so you'll be able to get to meet Jim. And that will be worth it in all itself. <laughs> I gotta get down! Ah. Didn't get enough on there, I guess.
You can tell because I'm hitting the exhaust pipe and I'm hitting the metal there and she's empty in the center there a little bit. She's taking off the old stuff on the exhaust pipe there. Going back to the easy stuff, okay? Going back to the easy stuff. I'll have to pay more attention when I put the filler on up through there, make sure I get enough on to fill that. I'm not, I'm not wanting to do it three and four times. Twice, once with fiberglass, once with filler, and I'm hoping that'll be done. I wonder if I should tell Jim he's going to be the guest of honor. <laughs> what? <laughs> we'll let him know sometime. Before the 8th or the 9th, won't we? Yeah. Uh, no doubt in my mind. Funny story, Harley, my daughter, went into the washroom. She come back out, Dad, Dad, she, what's wrong with the toilet water? It don't look good. Is the toilet all plugged up? And uh, it sort of looked like this, eh? Um, Jolene come up with this idea of throwing soap in the back of the toilet to keep the toilet, be able to keep it clean. And uh, Harley thought there was something wrong. <laughs> uh, it worked out good for a while until the soap got caught in the toilet. I'm going to have to make some braces or brackets to hold the, the soap in place so it don't get clogged. Sit, you know, when you flush the toilet, it goes in the hole. I'm going to have to make a bracket so it holds the soap so it doesn't go there. But it does help keep the toilet nice and clean. And the only reason I told that story because it looks like that.
If you just keep going there because it, it's a little thicker going on. Hey, baby! This is not the funnest job, but it's it's where it makes it look good. I'm a little shy all the way along there. That's too bad, too bad, so sad. Alrighty, we're around the outside. I'm basically not going to finish it right, at right in your very eyes, but I am going to show you what I'm going to do in the corner. I will use anything uh, to make it go faster. I'm hoping that I have the right bit in it, and I do. I've got a die grinder here. I know it's for metal. I've obviously used it for wood, and now I'm going to use it for filler. Good morning, Fina. Good morning. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shape it with this and then I can come in with my finger and do the filler afterwards. So I'm going to have to put a little filler on where it's low like that. There's going to have to be some fill put on that. And I'm hoping that I do a good job putting it on because I don't want to come back and keep doing it and doing it. I'm not going to. <laughs> That's all there's to it. I'm going to shape that the best I can. I don't want to take too much out of it. And I don't want to do it with my fingers because it's a hard go. But I can get it in shape so that I can spread filler over it with my fingers and I smooth it off nice. I'm taking my time. Good little trick. In case you want to smooth something out yourself, you don't want to dig your fingers in there. It's a first good good go around. It's not a finished tool, that's for sure. But it's a first good go around. If I had the square one, it would dig in on it. I wanted the round one like this with a point on it. I, had, I got the right one on. If I had the square one all the way around, the end of it would dig in there and gouge it. Don't want that. We want it to look nice. Without the least amount of labor, if, that's, if you understand what I'm trying to do. I just want to keep the air pins down so I'm not tearing it all. Oh. 
it's a hard deal sometimes when you get stuff fiberglass where you don't want it because you have to dig it off <laughs> Basically. I'm gonna turn around on this one. Don't wanna put my arse in your face, not at all. Trying to lighten the load up a little bit. Get rid of some finger bomb and that's all. And leave enough on there so when it comes time to put some filler on there I'm not down too far if you go easy you can shape things with it fairly easy Got a weld mark on there. It's probably gonna, yeah. You get the point. Let's put a little bit of fill on. Show you what I'm gonna do after. I'm gonna blow that off. I'm just gonna show you a little bit. That way there you'll know what I have to go through and what I'm going to do. So I'll mix up some fill and I'll put on the fiberglass. Uh, air hose is right over here. So there's quite a bit of work there to get that looking good enough for uh, our direct to metal paint. That's what we're gonna put on. We're not gonna prime it and do all that stuff. No, we're not. The reason I'm blowing it off because I don't want no dust underneath the filler because it will not stick that well. I'm going to blow it all off. That way there I know it's done. I probably could have saved putting the deck on like in the end, but I really wanted to get a deck so I could walk on it and all that stuff. And I'm not really worried about too much because the car is going to come up on top of it anyways. That's where we're going to be walking and the car is going to be on top. So it's going to end up getting dirty. So no big deal. No harm, no foul. Alrighty, let's put some filler on to show what we're going to do next. Wheel out my little patient here. You've got a couple boards already cut up, have you not? For Jolene cut up a couple boards to make some signs and I think I put them back. I'm not sure if I did or not. 
What's that? Do you mind if I use one? Nope, she doesn't mind if I use one, boys. God bless her. Nice clean board. You can get this board. Uh, we got it at the dollar store for buck fifty or something like that. It's not the dollar store no more. It's the buck fifty store or more. All right, I'm just going to throw that aside for a second. We'll open this bad boy up. We'll put a little bit of filler on the now on this on this filler right now it's been it's been setting a while and it's a bit dense so it's a bit dense and what I mean by dense not that it's not smart it's that it's thick so I am going to take and put just a little bit of resin in it to bring it around Let's look in let's look in the can. I think that looks like resin down there. That's basically how I you know that that dark look. Doesn't it sort of look like what's going on doing there? It's the resin of the fiberglass, resin in the filler. And I'm thinking that it's not stirred that well. I'll just add a little to this because it this this filler here was on the side of the can. That filler's in the bottom of the can. I'm sure that the the fill that's on the bottom of the can is going to need that resin and the stuff on the side I'm just trying to thin it out a little bit more or make it pliable better a little bit better pliable geez it could use some more just thin her up a little bit you also can do that if you're pinholing it or something like that, if I was going around doing a bunch of pinholes and I want this stuff to really lay down nice, nice and thin coat, you can add some resin to your filler if you want to. No harm, no foul. I, oh, I probably got a little bit much mixed up there, but we'll figure out some places where I need it. Let's take a look. I need a bunch along the top part, obviously, because it's shy. We'll try to get it in there the best we can. I might have mixed up a little bit of much. I may have, but it's not hot. It's, it's, it's muggy out right now. Um, it rained last night. this resin should slow the process of the filler hardening on me. Alrighty, let's do it. Harold heading out. She's a little slicker than the fiberglass was. I think I just got to take one swoop and get out of there. I'm going to try anyways. Basically want it in the hole where it's green. I know it's all green, but where it's dark green is where I want it. Trying to get the filler on the end, the, on the end of the spatula, squeegee, whatever you want to call it, spreader, fill a plier. We'll, we'll go back over it and smooth it off after, hopefully, with one fair swoop. Because I don't think it'll be dry yet. I'm hoping it won't be. I'm 
hoping this is the last coat for this so I'm just going to do it once again and I will not be doing it with a 40 grit I will be doing it with an 80 grit and the reason I want to do it with an 80 grit is because I want to smooth out I don't want no scratches barely any scratches for That's the part right there where I'm where it's I'm sweep that all off. <clears throat> Finger bomb a little bit here. chunk we're gonna leave it just like that I get messing with it too much and we'll have an issue and there probably will be places that I'm gonna have to have to uh, probably do again but I don't want to uh, the less places or less times I have to go over it the faster it is um, I, you know, if I have to do it three and four and, and five times, anybody that's been doing body work for a while <clears throat> knows that if you have to do, if you have to fill the spot three and four, five, six, seven times, or put filler on it to get it going where it needs to go, how slow it becomes. Um, the faster you can get it filled out and in, you know, done, uh, the quicker you are means the better you are. So take it any way you want to but the less times I have to fill that the better let's take a look you want to take a look at the shop there's a look at the shop it's going up they're doing a fine job I think basically what they're doing right now is trying to get ready for we're gonna have a storm here in Nova Scotia I guess um, I, I hear it all over the news stuff going on um, basically what's going on they're probably trying to get ready uh, there we're doing the same thing as everybody else is trying to get ready for the storm I want to thank everybody for coming and watching we appreciate it and uh, we're gonna keep on a rocking uh, like share comment ring my bell and uh, don't forget about the course if you want to get involved in it um, you'll get a we'll get a free tour obviously uh, you'll get to meet Jimbo you'll get to meet my Queen Jolene and uh, obviously you'll get to meet me and have be a part of something that you can always remember have a good one everybody come back tomorrow we'll see you again